All right, in this video, I want to analyze the Tennessee governor's video address he put out claiming that he is not pushing for a red flag law, all while expressing support for something that sounds exactly like a backdoor red flag law, albeit a slightly watered down one. However, first, I want to preface that with a story about orders of protection, since that's what he wants to talk about. Deputies get dispatched to a residence one night where a woman claims that her husband assaulted her. Deputies interview the husband and the wife, and their stories are identical up to a certain point. They both state that the husband suspected the wife was cheating on him. Spoiler alert, she was. And that he grabbed her phone to begin to look through it, and that a tug-of-war ensued. Where the stories become different is the wife said that during the tug-of-war, the husband violently and forcefully pushed her down to the bathtub with his hands. The husband said that he never pushed her and never touched her with his hands and that she was pulling so hard on the phone to try to get it out of his hands and leaning back into it that she caused herself to fall on her back onto the bathtub. Well, there were no witnesses, no video evidence, and no injuries to indicate one side of the story over the other. And thus, there was no probable cause for an arrest. So no arrest was made that night. Well, the next day... The wife, possibly bitter due to being caught in her infidelity, decides to go cop shopping. And she goes to a hospital and goes, oh, look at this mark that's forming on my back from my, where my husband pushed me onto the bathtub. And she gets a different deputy showing up from a different shift who believes her side of the story and obtains a warrant for her husband's arrest. And then she uses the report to get an order of protection against her husband. And in that order, he is ordered to surrender his firearms to a third party or to the government. Now, this man had never threatened to harm himself. He had never threatened to harm anyone else. And he never even threatened to harm his wife, even though some people do react adversely to infidelity. And understandably so. But he never did any of those things. And yet he was served in order of protection. I can't tell you how many times that people are involved in petty disputes with one another that escalate to them calling the cops on one another. And sometimes the allegations are true, sometimes they're not, sometimes we don't know. But whenever we can't obtain probable cause for an arrest for the person who called the cops, you know what their next question always is when we can't arrest the person they called the cops on? Uh, well, how do I get an order of protection against them? And we have to tell them that they have a right to go petition for an order of protection. They, they can go down to the courthouse to do it, even if we don't believe them. It's so common that even though it happens both ways in this day and age, to keep it simple, that we'll say a girlfriend gets an order of protection taken out against a boyfriend. And it gets granted and served and all that. And that law enforcement... Officers have to tell the boyfriend, hey, do not go back over to her house, even if she invites you. We will have to arrest you. Because it's happened so many times where that's happened, and then things calm down. They start missing one another. The girlfriend invites the boyfriend back over, and he'll even have text message proof of it sometimes. But law enforcement officers still have to make an arrest for violating that order, even though she invited him there. I remember there's one occasion they both admitted that, yeah, they were intimate. But then, you know, later that night, an argument started up, and she called the cops on him. So it should be pretty obvious that expanding this law is a terrible, terrible idea, especially when it's essentially going to function as a red flag law. The law should not be on the books as is when it's already being abused. Am I saying that's happening most of the time or that most orders of protection are, are granted unjustifiably? No. But it's happening enough to where I've seen it happen more than once. And that's just me. Well, anyway, let's get into uh, Governor Billy's video address here and call him out on the multiple lies he tells and the false narrative he tries to spin. All right, I cut through some of the nonsense at the beginning. Let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of it. We all agree that dangerous, unstable individuals who intend to harm themselves or others should not have access to weapons. And that should be done in a way that requires due process and a high burden of proof, supports law enforcement, punishes false reporting, enhances mental health support. 
All right, I already went over it in my last video about how hard it is to prove someone intentionally made a false report, especially when they're exaggerating something you did or twisting it out of context rather than simply making an outright lie. Not to mention how often the courts, you know, drop such charges as false reports. But anyway. Preserves the Second Amendment for law-abiding citizens. Tennesseans agree with this. Legislators agree with this. Second Amendment advocates agree with this. And so no, we don't. That's why you're having to make this video trying to justify it and blow all the smoke. To be specific. I'm proposing that we improve our state's law so that it protects more Tennesseans and reaches more individuals who are struggling and in need of mental health support. There's broad agreement that this is the right approach. It should be that simple, but sadly it's not. Political groups began drawing their battle lines before the bill was even completed. Oh, could that be because you are trying to rush through legislation, this piece of legislation, uh, in the last week or really the last two days of the legislative session? Yeah, I mean, how dare? I mean, you already described what you were pushing for, and it sounded just like a red flag law and still does. Um, but yeah, how dare we stand against something that you're trying to rush through in a matter of just a few days. I mean, Friday is the last day of the legislative session, or it's supposed to be. And we're supposed to be okay with you rushing some legislation through? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there'd be plenty of time for us to review it and contact our legislators in like two days. <laughs> right? Uh. These are the moments for which the people of Tennessee elected us to listen and to act. No, the people of Tennessee elected you based on what you campaigned on being, which was supposed to be a conservative who believed in the Second Amendment and the Constitution and not having big government, right? Uh, once again, another liar who just lied to get elected. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is possible when we're talking about the safety of our children, our teachers, innocent lives. The only thing standing in our way is politics. Um, politics or, or principles. The very principles that you claimed you would uphold when running for a political office. As of the aisle. National politicians and pundits, even the White House, are calling our proposal something that it's not. Red flag is nothing but a toxic political label meant to draw lines in the sand so nothing gets done. Oh, really? <laughs> That's why Joe Biden's calling what you're pushing for a red flag law because he wants nothing to get done? <laughs> oh, man. Who buys that? Like, seriously. <laughs> Joe Biden wants a red flag law to get passed. He wants any law that grows the power of the government at the expense of citizens' right to bear arms passed. Even if it's not as much as he, as he would like, he's for any kind of gun control. But you're, you're telling me that he's calling it a red flag law that you're pushing because he doesn't want anything to get done? <laughs> Man, talk about insulting people's intelligence. This is about Tennessee and the unique needs of our people. It should be reviewed on its own merits, not lumped in with laws from other states, many of which I believe don't strike the right balance of preserving rights and protecting society. Oh, thank you so much. You're just so gracious that you don't want to violate our rights as bad with uh, red flag laws uh, that are as bad in other states. You want to at least water yours down to trample on our rights. Oh, thank you so much. We should just be oh so gracious and thankful to you. Some advocates of the Second Amendment say something called involuntary commitment is the answer. But that would restrict all kinds of constitutional rights, including the Second Amendment. So basically, you're okay with violating constitutional rights as long as it involves gun confiscation or forcing people to surrender their firearms. You know, you don't want to deal with the, you know, who cares if the person who's a danger is free to walk around and do as they please. Long, as long as you told them to get rid of their guns, who cares what they're doing, right? <laughs> who cares what they're doing? Everything's fine. As long as they're going to therapy, you know, once every week or two, right? I mean, you know, they're free to do and plan it as they please. But, 
Now, I'm sure they'll just change their mind because you took their guns or made them give them up. It's not the best way. Efforts like the ones I just mentioned don't deliver the right results. They don't actually preserve the constitutional rights of Tennesseans in the best way possible. And they don't actually get to the heart of the problem. Of free they, they don't get to the heart of the problem. So again, you're saying the heart of the problem is guns rather than dealing with the person. So yeah, you're pushing gun control. Keep blowing that smoke though, I see. Tragedies. This is hard. I've said that all along. But in Tennessee right now, if a husband threatens to hurt his wife, an order of protection would temporarily restrict his access to weapons to protect the spouse. If that same man threatens to shoot himself or a church or a mall, our proposal will provide that same level of protection to the broader public. Now, what was that story I told you at the beginning of this video about an order of protection husband and wife? And he wants to expand that same kind of quote unquote protection to make it for, it's more easily for the public to have an order of protection served on you or red flagged. Ah, <laughs> oh, this guy. We have a proven solution that gets to the heart of the problem. Improved. An improved order of protection law to save lives and preserve the Second Amendment. And this is a pivotal moment. But both sides are at risk of standing in the way of a thoughtful, practical solution. Why? Politics. Division. But we cannot give up. We cannot shy away from the... And he goes on with his, uh, you know, pandering and mumbo jumbo trying to justify this. But, you know, it leads me to a point to kind of paraphrase Ron Paul. Isn't it kind of funny that the only time that they ever want to push bipartisanship and not letting divisiveness get in the way is when it's growing the power of the government at the expense of our individual rights? It's kind of funny how that works, ain't it? Well, anyway, you get the point of what he's trying to do. I'm sure anybody with just even an ounce of intelligence sees that he's pushing a red flag gun confiscation order and just trying to twist things to call it something else. Oh, we're just expanding order of protection law. <laughs> One that again has already been abused as is and you're trying to expand it to function as a red flag law. Thanks for watching. You live in Tennessee, let's not tolerate this betrayal. What adds insult to injury is that he says he's not pushing a red flag law, he's just trying to expand the protection order law. But what is the official name for red flag laws in many states? ERPOs, Extreme Risk Protection Order Laws. Man, the audacity of the scumbag to be so dishonest and twist words.